Hey y'all, Jordan here and welcome back to my channel. If you're new to this channel, I do all sorts of crafty things like sewing and crocheting and I post a new video tutorial every week. So if you are interested in learning how to do some crafty things, make sure you subscribe and also make sure you hit the little bell icon so that you don't miss any videos when I upload a new one. Now last week I showed you guys how to do crumb quilting using your big scrap fabric pile. And I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with that square. I thought about cutting it up and making it into smaller squares, but then I realized I have a ton of double pointed needles, knitting needles, that have been sitting in this bag for months and months and months, maybe even a year. It's been sitting there and it's been driving me insane. And I needed some place for them to go. And I thought, oh, I can make a knitting case for them. So I'm going to show you how to make this absolutely adorable knitting case. Now this is not my pattern, so I will make sure to post the link for this, but look how cute that is. It's got a nice space for all of your double pointed knitting needles and it has this nice flap to keep all your knitting needles from just falling out the top. So if you are interested in learning how to make this knitting needle case or, you know, crochet hooks, whatever you want to use it for, make sure you stick around. So I decided to just use a whole bunch of scrap fabrics to make this knitting case. And because I'm using scrap fabrics, they are very wrinkly. I love using this best press, especially for those pieces that are really, really wrinkled. It just does a really good job of getting rid of all of the wrinkles. So make sure if you are using scrap fabrics to iron everything first, just so that you have a nice, clean and even slate to work with. Now, because I am using scrap fabrics, all of my pieces are a little wonky, they're not even. So I just make sure that I have everything all nice, neat and even before I actually start cutting out my pattern pieces. And this is just really important just so you don't have wonky, wonky pieces, basically. You just wanna make sure everything is nice, straight and even. So next you'll just go ahead and you'll cut out all of your pattern pieces for your knitting case. And I will have those listed here. So you'll need two pieces for the outside lining. You'll need one piece for the big inside pocket You'll need one piece for the small inside pocket, two pieces for your inside flap, and then two pieces for your snap flap. Hands down, these friction pens are the best pens I've ever used. They're heat activated, so if you mess up, all you have to do is take your iron, stick it on there, it disappears. It's magical. On both your large pocket piece and your small pocket piece, you're going to draw a line half an inch from the top of your fabric. Next, you'll take your iron and you'll iron down on top of that half inch line for both of your pocket pieces. I like using really heavy cardstock to help me do this just to make sure that my, um, my hem line or the line that I'm folding over is really even. Once you've pressed your half inch line, you can take your fabric over to the sewing machine and sew an eighth of an inch from the folded edge for both pocket pieces. So you'll sew an eighth of an inch away from the edge on your small pocket piece and one eighth an inch from the edge of your large pocket piece. And notice I've got some random scrap fabric in the back that's just to keep my fabric from being sucked down into my machine. Make sure you keep your iron hot because you'll be using it a lot in today's project. Now we're going to mark your lines for your needle pockets. You'll want to start by drawing a center line that is six and three quarters of an inch away from the edges of your pocket pieces. Now I could try to sit here and do a voiceover for this whole part 
but quite honestly, my head gets in the way so much, and it's just really hard to try and talk as fast as I'm moving in this video because I've sped it up. So I will make sure to have all of the pocket sizes a little bit later on. You'll just have to pause the video to get it. Um, I did kind of change the sizes of each of the pockets for the needles um, just because when I was trying to draw them out, some of them just didn't make any sense or at least one of them didn't make any sense. So I just adjusted everything. So again, I'll have a picture and you can just pause the video and that way you'll have all of the pattern markings for your pocket pieces. Here's where you want to pause the video. That way you can get your exact numbers. It's really hard to see on the pattern itself what all the numbers are and they kind of leave some of them off. So here you are, my friends. All right, so let's line up the bottom of the large pocket piece with the bottom of the inner lining piece. And then we're going to draw a line that is one and three quarters away from the bottom of the fabric. You'll want to pin this. I usually don't pin, but I figured I would try out these new pins that I got for quilting. They were kind of a pain in the butt to get in the fabric. I don't know if maybe I need more fabric layers for them to slide in a lot easier, but whatever. Then we're going to sew along the marked one and three quarters line that you just marked. Once you've done that, you can finish marking your pocket lines the full height of the large pocket fabric. I probably should have done this before I went over to the sewing machine, but I didn't think about it. So I'm having to go back and redo it. Um, I would definitely recommend going ahead and doing this before you sew that one and three, yeah, one and three quarter inch line from the bottom. That way you don't have to move away from the sewing machine and then come back. It'll just save you a little bit of time. And please excuse my screaming children in the background. I don't know what they're doing. So now you're going to go ahead and sew over all of those pocket lines that you just made and make sure that you sew from the bottom of your fabric pieces and not the top of the pocket lining pieces. And I'll show you why that's so important later. You see me here, um, sewing it from the top, but I'm showing you why not to do this. So make sure that you sew from the bottom. So I wanna show you why it's important to start from the bottom edge, as opposed to starting from the top edge. So if you start from the bottom edge of your fabric and then work your way down, it'll be nice and clean and neat and even. If you start from this top edge, your fabric is going to start bunching up and it'll be really ugly down here at the bottom. And I'm just gonna leave this the way it is because this is for me and I'm not worried about anybody seeing it and it's gonna be covered up anyway. 
here all I'm doing is just going through and cutting any loose threads that I have hanging out on my project. Loose threads aren't cute. Once you've sewn all your pockets, just go through and press everything just to make sure everything's nice and flat. And then we're going to take our small pocket lining and line it up with the bottom of the large pocket lining. And then you'll just go through and pin everything. I did notice that my pins went in a little bit easier this time around, I guess just because there's more fabric. Um, but you want to make sure that whatever lines you drew on your small pocket lining line up with the lines on your big pocket lining. Alright, so we're just going to take our fabric over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew the pocket lines from the bottom, stopping at the top of the small pocket. So again, make sure you are sewing from the bottom of all of your fabric pieces and not from the top. Once you're done sewing, you can just remove all of your pins and then of course you're going to get your iron and press everything again. Next you're going to take your flat pieces and you're going to place them right sides together and then you'll take them over to the sewing machine and sew along all of the edges. But you want to make sure that you leave an area open that way you can flip your pieces right side out and you'll sew a quarter of an inch away from all of your fabric edges when you're doing this. When you're done sewing, you're going to clip the corners of your fabric flap and then what I do is fold down the fabric and press it with my iron. That way when I flip everything right sides out, the fabric side that has an opening in it will actually already have a fold in it and it'll just make it a lot easier to sew over the top of that. Once you've got everything flipped right sides out, go ahead and press your fabric flap. That way everything is nice and even because we are about to take it over to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch along three of the edges. We're going to leave one edge that is not top stitched and you will do a top stitch a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the fabric on this fabric flap. Once you've finished sewing, you're going to pin the flap to the rest of your fabric pieces. You'll want this to be a half inch from the sides, and it says to do a half inch from the top as well, but I would actually have put it a little bit closer to the top edge, just so that when you sew all the fabric pieces together, it gets encased in the seam. Um, but you're going to top stitch along that one side that you did not top stitch on and this is what it should look like. All right, so now we're going to cut some interfacing for our snap flap and also for the outer lining and the inner lining pieces of your knitting case. Now, you can use a medium weight interfacing. I think that this one that I used was a little bit heavier and it was kind of a pain in the butt to use just because it made flipping my fabric right side out a lot more difficult. So if I could go back and redo this, I probably would have used a lighter interfacing. But again, you'll need to cut two pieces 
for your inner and outer lining and then you'll want to cut two pieces of interfacing for the little snap flap that you will use to close your case. Now we're going to attach the interfacing to our fabric pieces. If you've never used interfacing before, there are two different sides. There's kind of a matte side and then there's a shiny side. So you want to make sure that the shiny side is touching the wrong side or the not pretty side of your fabric. And I just use a pressing cloth when I'm attaching interfacing to my fabric pieces um, just because I don't want any of the interfacing to get on my iron because that would be horrible to try and clean off. Um, and I would rather it just get on my ironing board than anything else. And with this bigger piece, it was easier for me to just stick the iron on the fabric piece with the interfacing on the bottom, um, just so that I could get it attached for a second. And then I put a pressing cloth, a pressing cloth over it. Just make sure once you're finished ironing your fabric pieces to make sure that your interfacing is actually attached. Um, sometimes if you don't leave your iron on the interfacing and fabric pieces long enough, it won't attach well and it'll kind of come off. So you just want to kind of flip your finger over the edges just to make sure it is attached. And if it's not, it's no big deal. You can just go back over it with the iron. Um, you can just go back over it with the iron again and it'll attach and everything will be all gravy. So here I'm just taking my snap pieces for the closure of my knitting case and I'm just trimming off the excess interfacing that is hanging off my fabric. And then I'm going to put the right sides together and I'm going to sew along three edges making sure to leave one of the shorter sides open and I sew this with a quarter inch seam allowance. Before I flip this right side out I'm going to clip the corners and I'm just leaving all this video footage in here so you can see what it's like trying to record a video when you have kids in the house. They're so excited when I record videos, they just want to be in it. And I just didn't have the heart to take any of this out because I thought it was so cute. <laughs> he wanted to show you guys his little creation. And also I was struggling with the interfacing to flip this right side out. So, you know, instead of you seeing me struggle with it, enjoy a child playing with Legos. Once I've finally gotten everything turned right sides out, I'm going to press it and then I'm going to make the placement for my metal snap. So I do a center line at one inch and then a perpendicular line at three quarters of an inch. Here all I'm doing is putting the metal snaps into my snap flap and I put one side of the metal snap on the inside of the snap flap. That way you can't see the metal snap from the outside of the snap flap. And then I just use my pliers to clamp everything in place. And then I will take it over to the sewing machine and I will do an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric just to have some nice decorative top stitching. And you still leave that one side open. Now we need to make our placement for the snap on the outside of our knitting case. So I did a horizontal line at five and a half inches, and then I did a perpendicular line to that at one and three quarters of an inch. And this is where, again, I'm gonna put my snap on the outside of my fabric. Once I got my snap in place, I just go over it with an iron really quick, and now we get to do the fun part. So I tuck in the flaps on the inside lining of my case, that way it doesn't get caught in the seam, and then you're going to place 
your outer lining and inner lining right sides together. I love using these clips instead of pins in this case just because there is so much fabric. Um, I just find that this is a lot easier and I don't stab my finger with a needle and let's be honest I do that all the time. So the more I can avoid it the better. So you'll want to make sure that you leave a space for flipping everything right sides out and that's why I did double clips on the right side. And you will sew all the way around with a half inch seam allowance. And see, this is why I said that I would have put that fabric flap just a little bit higher because I had some trouble getting it caught in the seam allowance as I was sewing all the way around. And one side would get caught in it and the other side wouldn't. And it just looked a hot mess, but I made it work. Before you flip everything right sides out, you wanna make sure that you go ahead and clip those corners. That way the corners are a little bit sharper when you do turn everything right sides out. And this step is optional. I decided that I wanted to go all the way around the edges with some pinking shears. It was kind of a pain in the butt to do because the fabric was so thick, but I felt like it might just help the seams lie a little bit flatter once I have flipped it right sides out. And then of course I'm gonna um, take my iron and fold down the opening that I left open um, just so that when I do flip it right sides out, it'll already have that crease in it. That way when I do my top stitching all the way around, after everything is flipped right sides out, it'll make it easier for me to actually catch those in a seam. Once you've gotten everything clipped how you want, you can go ahead and flip everything right sides out. And of course, again, once everything is flipped right sides out, you'll want to pull out that iron again and do a really good pressing just to make everything unwrinkled. This would probably have been a really good time for me to use that best, that best press again. I didn't think about doing that, but um, then we're going to go ahead and attach our snap flap. So you wanna make sure that everything lines up and then I use those clips again just to keep it in place. I tried pins, but it was just too thick for me to stitch it. And then you'll just do a top stitching all the way around, but make sure you keep that flap um, out of the way because you don't want to sew the flap down or you won't be able to put any of your knitting needles in your case. And that would be so sad because you just did all of that work. So I don't really know what kind of a seam allowance I did here. I kind of just went off of how I felt. So you just do you. And that's it, you're all done. The final product measures out to be six inches by nine and a half inches. Um, so here I am just putting all of my knitting needles in there because I'm so excited to have a place for them. And well, there you go, here it is. today. Next week I have a video that I will post showing you how to take an adult size t-shirt and downsize it into a kid size t-shirt. This is especially helpful if you have lots of shirts lying around that don't fit you anymore but you don't want to get rid of them because they have sentimental value or they're just so cute you don't want to get rid of them. So if you want to learn how to make a shirt a kid's shirt out of an adult t-shirt. Make sure you look for that video next week. Again, thank y'all so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe 
and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any of my new videos. And until next week, I'll see y'all next time. Bye!